Swinburne University of Technology. Howdy everyone. Um, lecture 5. Uh, as promised earlier, we're, we're looking at race, racism and, and ethnicity. Um, I got sick of the Bob Dylan thing. <laughs> and um, the, the, this stuff is all in the notes. And I've touched on I've, I've touched on quite a bit of this stuff in, in what I've said earlier, so uh, it it should be reasonably easy to follow. Um, there's a fundamental misunderstanding about the notion of race. We understand generally understand that there are different races throughout the world. That um, we look at me and I'm a pasty sort of white faced, blue eyed. Mouse, oh well, no, it's not mousy hair anymore, is it? Bugger. Um, Grey haired um, person who's obviously come from the old country, as we used to call it. Um, and then we look at David here, who's a rather tall, good looking, dark haired chap who is not from Scotland where I am. Um, where I'm where my family's originally from, both sides of my family originally from. Um, so we would we would look at David and see the dark hair and the 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 dark eyebrows and the rugged good looks and think that there were racial differences between the two of us. We'd look at an Asian person with long straight dark hair, um, eyes that that are formed differently, um, skin tone that's different, and think well there are these these are racial characteristics that that can be measured in some way other than visually. Um, and the implication is that there are biological differences between the races. Um, and this, this came out of, this is a relatively recent um, phenomenon, the idea of race, and it was a Victorian, sort of 18th and 19th century construct. Um, to a certain extent to, to um, <laughs> justify colonialism um, and the, the taking over of, of indigenous people's lands by, by um, the colonial powers who were not only British um, but certainly European in most cases and again we're, we're setting aside um, the other big cultures of the world, the, the, sort of the Asian and the African. Um, um, because it's very uncomfortable turning up to somebody else's land and say, well, this is ours, we're taking it over, back off. Um, or, as in the case that we did in Australia, just sort of stuck the flag in the land and said terra nullius, no one living here. And uh, the conceptualisation of terra nullius, which the High Court threw out only relatively recently, in the, the 90s, um, was that because there was no evidence of civilization, because um, the land wasn't used in the way we used the land, because the land wasn't um, uh, then used to, to mine resources and turn these resources into material objects like buildings and roads and that, that sort of infrastructure that we understand as the markers of civilization, meant that we were dealing with a race of people who were not, a, a, not as advanced as us. And in the early Victorian um, um, notion of, of the difference between the races, there was the idea of, of, of sort of progressive um, evolution so that, that the, the notion that the, you had monkeys, you had indigenous people and you had the English man um, was, was taken seriously, that, that these people were transitional um, between monkeys and humans and but this was, was the idea that um, um, Aboriginal people would die out when the, the, the British came here because they couldn't compete in that evolutionary sense uh, and, and so it was, it was a winner takes all um, evolutionary contest that, that the, the British assumed they would win. They didn't and so then um, when the Indigenous people didn't die out this started to challenge the notion of biological inferiority um, and then so the idea was they were going to be bred out and of course the British used the Irish <laughs> to, uh, uh, with the intention of breeding out the Indigenous people. So 
you had this idea that there were distinct races and you could measure that and you could measure that biologically you could note biological differences this also has an implication for racism because these are obviously racist concepts where where one group is is assuming uh, and then acting um, uh, in superior terms to the others because there there is an understanding in their in their sense that there's a hierarchy of of humanity and the higher up the uh, the scale you go the more rights you have over over others this is not true there are there are no biological differences there may have been biological differences a long time ago when we were emerging from the trees and you had populations that were isolated from the others um, but that isolation stopped thousands of years ago and so with sort of interbreeding if you like between different different ethnic groups across the world in the course of of us populating the world and particularly in the Middle East which was was sort of the cross section of the the world um, these any any potential for biological differences disappeared a long time ago um, Isolated populations, like people who, who lived on islands, um, had, had more probability of being biologically isolated as well, but this has simply stopped. So taking blood from David and taking blood from me and, and trying to find the difference between us in, in, in a racial sense is, is, is farcical, is impossible, because there is no biological measure or marker for, for those, those sort of differences um, and and those sort of and any differences that do occur are likely to to occur between people who look similar to me who have similar ethnic origins as they are between people who look dissimilar so the idea of race um, has always has always been a, a, a contentious one um, and has led us to believe that that there is this category that we can rely upon and we can use and we can talk about um, as distinct markers between people and the useful thing is not to think of people as racially different but ethnically different and this is what, how we look at these these things from a sociological perspective there are ethnic differences between people but ethnicity is is adopted ethnicity is cultural Eth ethnicity reverts back to what we were talking about the time before last um, th there are ways of identifying ourselves with a group they aren't biological ties to that group so um, ethnic identity comes through l language um, strongly and primarily religion plays a part you know, the ubiquitous food pay, plays a part culture plays a part and then um, identifying with the group also plays a part so um, your ethnic origin is is not determined by how you look, how you present yourself, although people may want to go, well, where do you come from? And um, if you give them the answer, Australia, and you look like you come from somewhere else, people are going to continue to question you until they're satisfied with the answer that's other than, than Australian. Um, and we have the problem, and, and it's been played out recently, last year in a, in a court case uh, here in Melbourne, where, um, a particular right-wing columnist was taken to court for what he had to say about Aboriginal people that he perceived as white um, and it was it was an interesting case from that point of view because it did bring all of those issues to a head uh, and the argument he made was that these people are essentially and substantially white because they look white not because they identify with one culture or another not because of their antecedents um, not because of, of um, the influences they had when they grew up simply by virtue of the way they looked they were put into that category um, and he sort of famously lost the case, although you know, there was there was riven by a lot by other issues such of such as freedom of expression, 
Um, but the problem, the essential problem was that, that there are people who are championed by this fellow who, who refuse to see people other than as their appearance um, informs them. So if I look at David, I want him to be, I probably want him to be Greek or what else do I want you to be? Lebanese. Yeah, I, I want him to be like that because he looks like that. But once I talk to him, then I'm finding it much more difficult to, to put him in that category. Um, so then I've got to reassess how I'm doing with him. Because I actually wanted him to be Greek at first, um, because he looked Greek. Um, so he's not, he wasn't, he wasn't, wasn't complying with me in, in that sense. So I, I have the fundamental problem that we all have when we want to categorise people on what we think is their, their racial background, um, not their ethnic background. So I would find it more fruitful um, if I was to, to feel comfortable about understanding more about David, um, is to talk about what he believed in, did he speak another language, what food does he eat, how does he identify himself. Because um, these things are going to tell me a lot more than simply, simply what, he, what he looks like. Um, and of course it's, it's then again this ethnocentric thing that despite the diversity and the sort of the, the multicultural nature of our society there still is a dominance of a sort of a white point of view so that nobody ever asks me where do I come from. But there would be occasions when people would ask somebody who looks slightly different even like David where, does, where do you come from and probably not assuming that he comes from there, but where did your family come from? Because you're obviously not from here. Um, and the notion of uh, you're not from here is the key that we, we need to, to wrestle with in, in this, this understanding of, of what constitutes being uh, an Australian or, a, or a, an English person or an African or whatever country of origin you come from when you're in a country that's, that's, that has a, a dominant group that doesn't look like you, you need then to wrestle with this, this notion that, that, that cleaves between fundamentalist views about race and more sort of progressive views, if you like, about, about ethnicity. So race, race and eth ethnicity is, um, is particularly, I suppose, particularly difficult and poignant now because of we're having a new wave of, of immigration, we're having immigration from Africa and we're having, we're, we're having Middle East, Eastern people come here um, as well and because we're isolated and because we're an island um, it's probably a lot more poignant for us whereas say if you were living in Europe you, you're close to, to the Middle East, you're close to Africa, there's, there's a whole lot more different faces in your world regularly that that makes makes notions of identity in terms of your ethnic presentation or what what we think of as your racial presentation much more fluid. Whereas in Australia, it's 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 we have a more static situation, so these questions are asked more regularly. And because then the other the other key difference I think uh, we've that's been pointed up in the last few years is, is differences in religion. So despite the fact that people want to categorise racially, we are now starting to see categorisation uh, on a religious basis. And that hasn't happened for, for maybe a couple of generations. And I think back to the division between Catholics and Protestants um, in Australia, going back to when, when um, Australia was first colonised or invaded, depending on your, your point of view, where, where the English were the, the sort of the overclass, the, the equivalent of the bourgeoisie, if you like, and the Irish were, were the equivalent of the proletariat. You had the same then division between not only, um, not so much racial division, although there would be racial characteristics that would be attributed to, to, to the Irish, because they tend to be attributed downwards in a negative sense than they are upwards. And then you had the, the, the divisions and the characterization of people on the basis of their religion. And so then you start to read, read people's, people's 
uh, religion as expressing um, basic personality characteristics. So you have these, these layers in terms of identifying people with their physical presentation and then, then some of these other cultural presentations in, in terms of religion. So we need to be, we need to be very careful about this um, and, and when it does, when it does sort of rear its ugly head, which it has on a number of occasions in Australia, we've you know, talked about the White Australia policy earlier on, we had Pauline Hanson in 1996, um, we had the debate in the 1980s about Asian immigration which it's implicated um, John Howard, we've, we've got the problem now with um, uh, Muslim uh, immigration where people are being identified um, with certain, uh, their religions being identified with certain characteristics that, that aren't sustainable but are, um, are argued for in, um, in, in narrow senses um, in these areas that, that, I've, um, that I've, I've talked about earlier, particularly in, in, in the tabloid press. So um, I think the key thing to, to take out of this is that ethnicity is a far more useful, useful category than, than race when we're starting to look at different groups within, uh, within Australian society, uh, given that's, that's where we'll be looking from. And ethnicity, uh, Ethnicity is much more fluid and, and is, is as much a matter of identity as it is a matter of, of, of biology and that's, that's the important thing to remember and this is sort of the fundamental uh, position that, that sociology takes, that, that, that uh, identity construction, um, social formation are, are learned processes, are processes that, that come by um, engaging with the environment rather than, than biological processes that we can't, we can't deal with because there's, they're, they're sort of genetically printed upon us and there's, there's no avoiding these things. So that the, the, key, the key message to, to get out of this is that, that uh, ethnicity is, is, is a case of identity rather than, than, a, than a case of biology. So I'll see you next week for the next lecture which is going to be oh gender it'll be gender yeah gender so see you next week thank you this has been a swinburne production